Hey guys, John from FlyMikeAlpha.com and today we're going to be going over low and route charts and some of the basic symbology on these charts that's a little bit different than your regular VFR sectional charts. So as we come down here to the Sarasota Venice area, we're going to go ahead and take a look at our basic airport markings. And where we don't see the blue or magenta markings like we're used to, we now see green, brown, or possibly blue airport markings like we have up here in Jacksonville, where Jacksonville is a blue airport. So if it's green or blue, realize that there are instrument approach procedures going into that airport. If it's brown, then there simply is not approach procedures or radar minima published for that airport. As we come back down towards our local area here, we're going to see some more common things that we recognize like Compass Roses for VORs, Victor Airways that are often also published on VFR sectional charts. The differences we notice here are it's a little bit more obvious when these Victor Airways intersect with each other and create intersections and of course all these intersections have names and these intersections are often found in a GPS database and can be navigated to and you'll use those intersections when you're building VFR or I'm sorry IFR flight plans so when you're building an IFR flight plan you may name these different um, intersections on your route of flight along with something like from the LaBelle VOR via Victor 157 to Rinse intersection. We can see where our Victor Airways are named, Victor 521, Victor 157, and we see some numbers below them, and those numbers are distance markers. And what's the difference between this number that's all by itself, 11, versus this 177 that's in a box? Well, if it's in a box, it's a total distance marker, so it's measuring from the LaBelle VOR all the way up to the Lakeland VOR compared to this 11 is just measuring the distance between Quincy and Rinz intersection. We can see here we have some notes even on Victor 157 that is 77 miles from Lakeland VOR to the LaBelle VOR or 94 miles from the Lakeland VOR all the way down to the RSW VOR. Now we're used to those minimum elevation figures, those big numbers with the uh, big first number and the little second number that denotes the highest obstacle in the area on a VFR sectional chart. And around Sarasota, that number is 1,900, a big one and then a nine. And that talks to us about that little tower that's out to the east of Sarasota that's up pretty high there in a hazard for us. So now we notice we have the same big number, big first number, little second number, and that is going to be our Aroca off route obstacle obstacle clearance altitude. So the off route obstacle clearance altitude Aroca 2,900 is a thousand feet higher than the 1,900 we normally have in this quadrant because this number here doesn't tell you the height of the highest obstacle. It gives you the altitude you should fly at or the minimum altitude you could fly at if you're off route in that area and still have your minimum a thousand foot clearance between you and terrain. So when you're flying IFR in non-mountainous areas you should always have a thousand feet between you and terrain and then in mountainous areas like North Carolina maybe you need two thousand feet between you and the highest obstacle. So for us here the off-route obstacle clearance altitude 2900 we can see if we stick to a published route like Victor 35 here, then we could go down to 2,000 feet if we're along that published route because that route keeps us clear of that obstacle, that tower. We can even see here on Victor 579, we could fly 3,000 feet, and that is our MEA, minimum in route altitude, or we have an asterisk next to 1,600. We could fly at 1,600 feet along Victor 579 and still have a 1,000 feet obstacle clearance, but that is a MOCA, a minimum obstacle clearance altitude, and all it guarantees you is that you're not going to hit anything. It does not necessarily guarantee you that you're going to be able to receive the Viola intersection or identify it because you may be too low and too far from the VOR to receive a good signal. So this MOCA, is an altitude that will guarantee you obstacle clearance and signal reception if you're within 22 miles of the VOR. So if you're within 22 nautical miles from the VOR, you will get the signal reception guaranteed and obstacle clearance. But once you're more than 22 miles, you may not be able to pick up the signal. 
and you would have to go up to 3,000 feet. The 3,000 feet not only guarantees you obstacle clearance, it also guarantees you signal reception along the entire route, along this entire Victor Airway. Now, when would we change over from, say, uh, the Sarasota VOR to another VOR we're flying to? Well, normally we would change over when we're halfway to our destination. That makes sense, you know, so the signal is half as strong coming from one place, so we switch over to pick up the stronger signal as we get closer to the next VOR, unless it's designated otherwise. And what that looks like when it's designated otherwise is there'll be a changeover point. And that changeover point is actually where you want to switch the VOR signal. And I don't see any here in Florida. We may have to look at another map here and we can see this little L-shaped or zigzag symbol is actually our changeover point. The changeover point will tell you not only where along the route pictorially, but it also gives you the distances from each VOR of where you should be switching your uh, VR receiver to for the best signal reception. The next things we notice here along these Victor Airways are these thick black lines and then an intersection and then another thick black line. But every so often we notice here that thick black line terminates with a little stop symbol there. So what is that little stop symbol about compared to Sabi versus Viola? Well, that stop symbol simply means that you need to look at your MEAs and realize that there's a different MEA along that route. Coming up here on the 312 radial from uh, Lee County Vortac RSW, we would be at 2,000 feet along the route, crossing Pence at about 2,000 minimum. And then once we hit Viola, we need to immediately start climbing to 3,000 feet, so we have a higher MEA. The MEA here, 2,000 feet, along Victor 35 is the same when we cross Sabi intersection all the way down, so there's no markers here that denote a change in the MEA. These funny little boxes here, that with the arrow, is a total mileage box depicting total mileage to this point from the VOR, and total mileage from the St. Pete Clearwater VOR, St. Petersburg VOR, PIE, down to here is 56. From RSW to Sabi, it is 40. Here we can see when we go nine miles back to Charo, it's 31. And of course, when we come just two miles back to Sexton, or however you'd like to say that, then it's 29. It's important to note that if you can't pronounce these intersections, don't feel bad. There's a lot of 30-year captains at Delta and American Airlines that can't pronounce them either. They're very difficult. Now, next thing we want to talk about is the difference between this little triangle here, this little intersection, and one that's an intersection, five letters, but not the little triangle, and it's not along a Victor Airway. Well, that's a GPS waypoint. The only way you're going to find it is not with your VOR, but with an RNAV or GPS system in the aircraft. Remember, those GPS systems can't be an iPad. It needs to be panel mounted and an approved TSO GPS for the airplane. It does so happen that oftentimes we have GPS waypoints along Victor Airways, but sometimes they can be all by themselves, and the reason for that is they probably are lying somewhere along an approach to get you lined up with an approach into maybe Clewiston, since we do have approach procedures going into Clewiston. Now, these brown lines here are not anything we're going to follow. Those IR routes, if you remember from the sectional charts, IR were military routes. Now, when they're skinny military routes, like this one right here, IR-20, that's a military route with a five nautical mile or less um, radius or width, rather. So five nautical miles either side of the center line, so really a 10 mile wide route along here, along IR-20. And then these down here are more than five miles wide. It doesn't really tell us how much, but just more than five miles wide on either side of the center line, so more than 10 miles uh, total diameter across the airway for IR-34. Now, sometimes you'll notice that there are these VOR compass roses, and then sometimes they're bigger, and then sometimes they're not there at all, like for the Homestead VOR. It simply is missing. Well, if it doesn't have a compass rose, but it's depicted as a VOR with that little uh, droid type symbol, that is a terminal VOR. So something you're only going to be able to receive 25 miles out. It's for a very local area, probably just to help with approach procedures. Then when you see a compass rose, the size of it actually doesn't matter. The size is just there to accommodate the congestion of the airspace. So since there's two VORs next to each other here, they made them smaller so they'd fit nicely. No rhyme or reason to the size or width of the compass rows. People often mistake it for being a high or low VOR based on the size, and that's not the case. 
So what we have here is just either a high or low VOR for the Dolphin VOR and a high or low VOR for the Virginia Key VOR. We don't know if it is high or low. How we're going to tell that is to look in the chart supplement and it will have an H or an L next to that VOR for an airport that it services. And also notice the difference between Vortac, VOR, when you see these little green dashed lines, that simply just means the same as like a terminal area chart on in our sectional world or in our VFR world. They have a more detailed IFR chart for this particular area. We see this green along the coastline that's denoting water. So when you have lakes, they're going to have green around them to denote water. We can see here we have this funny little symbol coming off of West Palm Beach 089. And what that is, is that's actually the localizer. And there's the localizer frequency, the identifier and the Morse code for it that you could tune to and use that localizer to help you identify Wigbo intersection or however you'd like to say that one. So you could identify Wigbo intersection off of the Vero Beach VOR, uh, which is Treasure Art VOR, TRV there, down Victor 159. And then when you are on Victor 159 and you intercept in our center on the localizer for West Palm Beach, then you must be at Wigbo intersection. You could also identify Wigbo off of the Pahokee VOR. So either way would work, it just depends how you want to do it. Maybe the Pahokee VOR is out of service, so you have to use the localizer or vice versa. Now we're familiar with MOAs and restricted areas from flying VFR. The restricted areas are still denoted in blue. MOAs are denoted in this uh, brownish color here. And they simply will just try to vector you around those MOAs if they're hot. It's really up to air traffic control to keep you where you need to be when you're IFR. You really don't have to worry about airspace. And that's why the only airspace we really see depicted on here is Class Charlie and Class Bravo airspace. It doesn't really affect us when we're flying v IFR. They're gonna take care of sending us where we need to go, but it's just helpful for situational awareness. Another Class Charlie there at Daytona. And of course, Jacksonville is also a Class Charlie. Now, as we come down our map here, we can find the ADAs that we know as that magenta dotted lines here. And it's depicted with blue dotted lines, that same solid line. And so we still see where the ADAs is on our low on route charts. And of course, if you're crossing it and you're on an IFR flight plan, you really don't have anything to worry about, but it's still good to reference if maybe you're on a composite flight plan and you want to know where that aid is actually lies so you can activate your IFR flight plan before crossing it. The other thing to notice here is we have a lot of intersections, these little empty triangle boxes that are in fact empty. They're just little blank spaces there. And our VORs are the same way. They're empty as well. Well, what happens when it's colored in? Well, the difference is just that it's a compulsory reporting point. We'll talk a lot more about reporting points in another video, but it's a compulsory reporting point. So it doesn't affect anything other than that's a point that if you're not in radar contact, you need to report crossing it to ATC. And you can see that the vast majority of our intersections are not compulsory reporting points simply because you're always in radar contact when you're in this area. The last thing we'll talk about is a little bit outdated. We don't really have any more, but we have NDBs depicted here as all these little dotted brown lines. And we can see another NDB here. They were used for many years for IFR and VFR navigation. And now we no longer test them. We no longer talk about them really with students. And most aircraft either have, don't have the receivers or the receiver's broken. So just simply know that that's symbology there. If you're wondering what it is, is that three digit, three number, AM frequency for a NDB. That's all we've got for basic IFR low end route charts. These charts cover from the ground on up to 18,000 feet MSL, flight level 180. Stay tuned for our next videos on the advanced IFR low end route charts and high charts. We'll get in a lot more in detail, but all the other symbology that's on here and all the other great information that's buried in these charts it's very similar to all the great information buried in those sectional charts. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching and thank you so much for sharing us on Facebook, Twitter, and all the other social media sites. If you have any questions about the video at all, just leave them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Be sure to give us a thumbs up on our video and you can subscribe to us to keep up with all our latest episodes right over here on the right. Also, check out some of these other helpful videos below and remember, if you can't fly every day, then fly at mikealpha.com. We'll see you all next time.